Hi friends, how are you? Um, welcome to World of Bridging and Extensions. Uh, my name is Joy Fido and today we're going to be talking about something really exciting. And exciting in the sense of it's really current. This is the latest craze. So as always, we here like to share the knowledge that everybody's asking for. And um, wig making has been there for so long uh, and somehow I never wanted to get involved with you know following the craze I'm not someone for craze I like doing what I want to do not what everybody's doing but somehow the demand from everywhere and me seeing ridiculous things going on around me has just made me decide okay let me start showing you the right way of doing things so today is going to be quite an exciting one. It's just what I'm, what I'm trying to do today is to show you something that's not right. Because you will learn to make it right as we go along in other videos. So welcome on board. Okay, so before I go into this, I'll quickly say a big thank you to all our subscribers who continue to be part of us. A big thank you because you've been there with us for this long journey. Um, I know there are so many people who all they want to comment about is I talk too much. I hear that all the time. Um, yesterday I had to reply to someone and I said, yes, I talk because I'm a teacher. My job here is to explain every action to you. I'm not one of those channels where I just add movement and then you go, oh, wow. And then you wonder how it was done and why it was done that way. So I try to explain every action. And people who come to train here get so much out of me explaining actions. So what I say to people like that, A, you can mute the voice so you don't hear anything I'm talking about because you don't need it. Or B, if you think I'm not useful to you at all, I always say to them, move on to the next channel. YouTube is open for everyone. But anyway, for people who have been patient with me and listen and learn from me, a big thank you to you. So thank you so much for being there. And as always, please subscribe so you get more from us. Remember to share with your friends and remember to like our videos as well. It just helps to make us feel that we're doing something you like. And that helps us to bring more. So enough of that. Okay, so the main thing we're working on today is this wig. And so this is the wig I'm talking about. And then this is a regular wig. So you're wondering what's wrong with this wig? And I'll show you what's wrong. So I'm flipping it upside down. And where's the problem coming from? So you're seeing the gap that they're creating in the lines of the wig making. See that? from there to there such gap look at it they even went as far as chopping up so much hair away from there and I don't know why they did that and they went further on to cut all this away I mean give that much gap again so much gap in between now that's the part that really got me you see that so they're trying to get hair in and this part stops halfway and they stop there they stop there so they supposedly finished look at that so this is what's happening before the closure comes in. So this is the closure. And I don't know what type of closure that is, but that's the closure. And so this closure then sits over this. And so look at what happens when the hair is over it. So any little mistake you make, we just open that up on your head. And that's really, really disgraceful. 
Look at that. It's as if they're trying to... I think they probably put just one bundle of hair on this head. Okay, I also know that the lady in question doesn't like too much hair in her hair, but that doesn't explain putting as much scanty hair as this in this hair. Doesn't do it. And so this is what we don't want to have. This is what we don't want to have. And look at the wig cap they're using as well. All of that should have been taken off so that the closure sits really well. What I did, I helped her to put that in so it holds her friendly. But that's the hair and I thought it would be nice if you see it. And then if you're the one designing hair for your clients, this is what you shouldn't be doing. Okay, so if I haven't explained better, this is the gap between this line and that line. And what should ideally happen, there should be another line of hair here. Another line of hair. So it fills it in a lot better than this. So it's extremely gappy. And another part, the part that I was talking about, this part here, should not have been left halfway. Because now this closure is not blocking this and so it's exposing the hair. So this part should definitely have finished off and get all the way down there to give her a very neat closing. And then that way the closure would have then nicely covered that opening. So that's what you get most of the time. And I've, I've seen people send to me before, like hair that could be, I mean, I'm very sure this one feels they've done a great job because even that whole line would have been off sometimes and would have been gap as big as that, which I've seen as well. So it's just to remind everybody out there telling themselves that they're designing wigs that this is not ideal. Okay, so you can see some of the materials here. What I want to show you now is the kind of materials you need to be able to create a basic wig. Basic wig in the sense of you want to design something like this person has done and people will pay good money for it, depending on the quality of hair that you use. So right now, like I said earlier, wig is in. This is what everybody is trying to do now. And so it's important that you understand what's going on and then join in because then is the in thing so you want to join in and make money out of it as well we have workshops going on on wig making basic wig making not the one you knot this is the stitching because there's a big difference between the knotting of the strands of hair on a lace base and the stitching of tracks of hair just like this one was done you will be able to make a wig that people will pay good money for like my friend did so why not you doing it and making money? So we have classes on this. And I'm just going to show you the kind of materials you will need if you were coming to this class. So that you're prepared for it. So the first thing you need is this. Uh, what do they call these heads? Polyfiller heads. Anyway, they're extremely light. So they're not heavy. The beauty about them is. This next thing that we need. These are T-pins. And T-pins, you need them to be able to hold the weft or rather the cap, the wig cap down so you can line your hair on them. So T-pins, they call them T because look at it. It looks like a T, like a capital T. So what T-pins do is you can poke it into, the, into this polyfiller head. And it helps to hold the wig net down. And then you can stitch on it very easily so you don't need any head that um, has hair on it because when you start stitching it will be picking up that hair so that's what we need this plain head and this other one is called the bald head but we don't need bald head because that T pin cannot go into the bald head so we need the bald head for something else 
so I'm gonna just cover this. But anyway, so this head, the tip in, and that gets you started there. Next thing you need is the wicker. There are so many different types of wig caps, which when you come for training, you get to know more about them. So there's one called the mesh dome wig cap, the regular wig cap, the one that says weaving cap, and they look like that. They got mesh in them. And then another dome cap. So they all look different and they all dif do different things. So obviously when you are training, we will explain all the different roles that they play for you. Again, um, that regular weaving cap is the one this person used to create this week. They all have their different roles. In training, you get to know better. One of the things I guide you to work with is the colored chalk. The tailor's chalk. Now, what the tailor's chalk will help you do is to know exactly where you want to stitch your weft. So you'll be needing that. The next thing you need is the hair extension itself. Hair extension. Um, they come in different qualities. They come in different lengths. This particular one is a 14 inch. And what would you be needing? You you need a bag three, at least a bag three bags. Again, my young, my friend, the one I just told you that has that hair, when I make her weave, sometimes she wants just two. She doesn't want too much. So still, if I'm making two, I know how to line it so that it's not gappy like you just saw. And then the next thing you need is the closure. So these are again materials you will need when you're creating your wig. So closure, now that's a proper closure, not the type I saw there. So you need closure. Uh, most times when we get the hair, you get them with that particular closure that matches with the hair. This is a bit wavy, but it doesn't matter because when we're done, we're going to style the hair and it will blend in. So you get different textures of hair and depending on what your client wants, you'll be able to create your wig with that. Now personally, I like a lot of volume. So when I create my wig, my wig, I put a lot of webs. Sometimes I've done up to about five, five webs. And then um, some people don't like that much. Um, and then you also have the, what's the other one called? No, not a closure. The, I'll remember what it's called and I'll tell you. Frontal, yeah, you also have the frontal. So again, for some people, cause frontal is like nearly halfway. So you may just need just two bags to finish the back. So all of those are just different ways of getting the wig done. Um, I will show you a frontal now, once I'm done with what I'm doing right now. Okay, so this is what the frontal looks like. And this is the back of it. So what you've done, when we stitch it in, is taking so much space already in the front. And again, this frontal is absolutely brilliant for people who don't want too much volume in their hair. So it gives it a really, really natural look. And that's why people ask for frontal. Um, but personally, I love volume, so I'm not one for frontal, but like my friend who doesn't like volume, she's one for front too. So that's what they look like. And that's the back of it. And that was that one. And this is another one. And you can see that what they've done, they give you openings for them. So most of them are pre-opened, opened, opened, opened. So what lots of people do when they have the frontal, they can actually open as much as they like in different directions. 
and that's the beauty of the front too. While the the closure is just in that middle, the front toe is spread across the whole hairline. Okay, so that's that on knowing the kind of materials you will need to be able to create a basic wig for your client. Let's look at what a regular done wig will look like. Okay, so I did say I will show you some of the properly done wig. And so this is one of the ones I made. So this is a base and this is what should have happened with that wig. They should have cut the, met the front of the wig cap so that the lace is on its own and then and then you can actually see it looking like is the client's head. And when that's not there, when we look at the back of this hair, see how full it is. And so we're trying to see the, la the gaps that were given. You can see the gaps. And so that's how it carries on. And the gap carries on. So the gaps are really, really not too far apart. You can see how nicely full this hair is. There's enough hair to carry you through all the way. And the ideal thing is as you get closer to the hairline or to the front, your gap should even be a bit closer. So it feels really, really covered without hair being gappy. And so you see now that's the closure and see the hair finishing off there. This particular closure did not come with this hair. So you can see a hint of difference in the color. But it doesn't matter. Because we're just playing with color play. And so right here, we put a blonde color. And so when I wear this hair, I kind of love seeing the blonde drop on my body. And that's one example of a good head of hand sewn wig. Again, with the wig, um, with the elastic band to hold the hair in place. Mm -hmm. This one, I actually colored it myself before stitching this on. And what I did with this one, I gave it like a fringe. So the stitching is very similar again in the sense of not much gap in there. Not much gap in there. And you're not going to see anyone stitched halfway and left hanging there. No, it always. This particular one ended up with what we call a closure. That's a closure. Where you don't really see how this finished off. Because there's no regular closure, lace closure. This is our own built closure. And that's because you want a fringe on this hair. That was one. And then here, I was playing with the wavy hair. Now, getting this done is another method of creating this hair. And this is very close to the one I've done on my head as well. There's no closure involved with this hair. And because it's wavy hair, you just want to give it volume. Again, you don't put too much gaps in between similar way of stitching but the thing with wavy hair is there are so many unique things you need to do with wavy hair and i am a huge fan of wavy hair so you notice most times when i'm doing videos i'm wearing wavy hair is because i love them and there are different ways of creating them as well
again the mesh we cap and this does not involve any closure at all okay so that was it this was a really short video but you can see when we put our young ladies all up for you to see what this hair looks like what a regular handmade wig should look like so now look at the back of this one you remember where the other people had no hair at the back see how glossy and full this back is and so client has hair on and she has time to brush her hair nicely has good volume of hair to brush you can see how full it feels and then of course the front brush it and let it all nicely blend in and then the other one with the closure I mean yeah the closure and then with a bit of a fringe you've seen that and see how full that is as well so again normally when you go with the human hair you're gonna have to learn to style it and tongue it and do different things with it mm -hmm. but as part of the training you will learn all of that so there you have it uh what not to do with a homemade or handmade wig and what to do with it so there's going to be a series of um, workshops on how to make these wigs. We've got some dates. We're going to put it in the description box. So if you want to be part of this, just register. Um, what we need is someone who already knows how to weave. Because if you don't know how to weave, you're going to have to do a weave course first. Again, you gain so much out of it because what I say to people, most things come as a fad or something that everyone's crazy about and then it changes. And the thing is, weave has been here for centuries. So if you know how to weave, creating wig becomes a lot easier. But then who knows where wig is going to go soon. So thank you for watching this video and remember to subscribe, remember to share with your friends, remember to like. We look forward to seeing you in the wig workshop. And who knows, one day we'll do one on YouTube for you to see, but obviously, you know what it's like. We'll give you a little bit of snippets so you have an idea what it should be like. Thank you again and see you soon. Bye.